Hey guys, it's Summing Rush. Today I'm going to teach you how to kick ass in your light tanks on the map Glacier. So for this one, there's three already and we're bottom tier. So every single play you see here is going to kind of be hyperbolized. Because there's three already, it's like any mistake we make is going to get punished three times. And they've also, we're bottom tier. So any mistake we make, it's going to be, instead of taking a hit for 240 damage, it's going to be 390. So it's like you have to be really careful, but this should give you a general idea of how to play this map and like kick everyone's ass. So... Like I said, Glacier. What I like to do on Glacier is I love to open up. Now, because there's three already in this case, you won't be able to... I won't be able to stick around as long as I would normally like to. But I love to come to this position my light tanks and get early shots and spot people who are kind of going to down the one line. Any heavies that are driving into position, you can come up to here and shoot them. And then also, if the enemy has lightly armored TDs, which they do, they've got a Challenger and a Scorpion, you can get early shots in them by coming up this ramp. Now, in this case, because we're in a Chinese medium, we're going to kind of be fighting our... I'm going to ignore those lights. The TDs are the priority, honestly. There's T30 spotted. Nothing over there. There we go. T29. I'm going to put a shot in his direction because I didn't really expect a T29 to be lit. You would generally expect to shoot at the Scorpion G, who's a much bigger profile, and so you can kind of get away with snapshotting at them. But the T30 is crossing the open. As a Type 62, I can't challenge him. The main thing is to kind of just sort of stick around, look for shots in people like the 45 TP, and... Once that's done, you just get the fuck out of there. This guy, I'm surprised he hasn't seen me. I put a shot in his direction. You know, take one more because I'm being greedy fuck. What's the T30 doing? Yeah, that's not good. Okay, he missed. Thank God. I need to get out of there. This is a bad play. Luckily, the T30 absolutely paid for trying to get a shot to me. That's 500 assists that I just got. But really, sticking around for that long was... Like, I was lucky he missed, basically. So, next play. Like, this is what you want to do on Glacier. It's like, you take the mid, you get in a couple early shots. If you're more disciplined than I, you leave a bit sooner, because you can see it was only spotty damage that I got right there. And you look for opportunities elsewhere. Now, on this map, what I'd love to do is I'd love to play the north. The reason for that is it's really already safe, and you can kind of flank heavies and shoot them in the side of the turret. And that's what tanks like the Type 62 are good at. Generally speaking, it's like the south is okay, but, you know, in this case, we have no one there. So... Trying to win the north is absolutely a solid play for the light tank, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So, a couple things are going to happen here. What you can expect on glaciers, you can expect a bunch of people to be camping at G1. Because the Karn is so far back, we're going to have to poke on G1 to shoot at the Karn, right? Anyone sitting here will have a line of fire on us if we engage the Karn. So, you have to be really careful about that. So, what I'm going to do is ideally I could get up to here to engage the Karn, but that would just, you know, the Karn would just DPM me down. He'd win that fight every single time. What we're going to do instead is we're going to go like this, and we're going to kind of support our heavies. If anyone gets lit over here, we want to be the one who's ready to shoot at them, because you can imagine, like, these guys are average players. They're probably not expecting to deal with a Scorpion G and a Challenger who are probably in this, you know, if they were anywhere else, like here, they would have been spotted by now. So they're probably back here. So if they get spotted, we want to deal with that. Now, a couple people would suggest that you go scout right now. Really, that's not an option. I could YOLO the scent that would get me, uh, the Karn, that would get me killed. He just got roasted. Okay, there you go. It's probably a Scorpion. So where would the Scorpion sit? Probably beside this rock. So I'm actually going to switch to AP. Okay, this guy fired right here. So I'm going to take a blind shot. No? Okay. So what I'm doing is I saw the IS-6's blind shot. I think it's about here, and we're just going to put shots into this area. I would also expect the Scorpion G to have moved over to here. And then I also see that the Challenger is spotted. So what I'm going to do is because this Karn isn't spotting me and I don't have to worry about that, is I'm going to try to render the Challenger. No, that's not working. Okay. What can I do? If I lead the charge here, I might die, and that would potentially throw the game. The thing is, this Karn should die no problem. So what will happen is, like, what a lot of people would love to do in this situation is they'd love to YOLO forwards, but that's not a smart thing to do unless we're, like, definitely winning this one. And I could totally see all these heavies dying as they cross the open field to shoot them to, uh, you know, the enemy campers in base. So what we're going to do instead is, like I said, generally don't want to push down the one line. It's stupid because they've got a lot of people covering that. We can imagine their Scorpion G is also there as well. I'm going to go back to base because right now the enemy team is pushing into ours, and I think I can actually defend that from the mid. So if you're ever defending your base, what you want to do is you want to put yourself on the front lines as much as possible. And so what I think I can do right here is if I go to here, I can support and shoot this Karn in the ass, and I can also shoot at these guys over here. And so I'm thinking that's going to be a lot better of a play than, you know, if I were to, like, just go straight back to base and basically play where the arty is. So, from here, we've got rear shots on people like this T-49. That's exactly what we need. Good. That one didn't hit, but this is the type of shot that I want. I notice a tree falls down here. We don't need to worry about moving because this is a light tank and our camo is always at 100%. 
T49, put a shot into him. Now I'm going to get spotted here, right? But realistically, the Artie's not that big of a deal. Artie has bigger problems. People are pushing into our base. And if you were an Artie player, it's like, who would you be shooting at? Me and my light tank or the heavy tanks who are pushing into? Probably the heavies who are pushing into you. So I don't really have to worry about it as much. Sure, it is a threat, but if I move around and kind of try to stay lit, that's going to be good enough in my opinion. Scorpion G just clipped the top of my turret there. <sighs> sucks now i have to fall back like so so falling back like this is going to give the t30 a potential to kill me so i have to watch that with my ping a lot of times people can drive around corners and just catch me totally unaware so i have to be really careful but generally speaking it's like the mid and helping this one line push is really really strong so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fall back like this this should give me an edge against the t30 if he pushes into me i'll have the eyes and then also if this is3 decides to fall back i'm going to have shots in him so it's kind of keeping me safe from everyone except Artie right now but it also should that is3 decides to fall back see the problem here is the is3 is full hp and these guys are both one shot so t30 one shot i'm not going to yield with the t30 that would be stupid what i really want to do is i want to get into a position to shoot this is3 if i can we know their scorpion g is full hp so how do you respond to a situation like this well we might win but we might also lose the thing like i said these guys are such low hp it's like it's totally foreseeable for them to die my position so strong if he falls back <laughs> so I'm faced with a bit of a dilemma here. It's like, if this IS-3 falls back, I have shots. The only other way for me to get shots, in my opinion, right now is kind of like to go up here. But I'd rather stay in this position, because it's like, if the Scorpion G gets lit, if anyone gets lit, I'll have shots. And that seems to be much stronger. Now, no shots on the Pershing. Do I get spotted? No, I'm not spotted. Okay, so one question is, where's the Scorpion G? Well, the Scent just got lit, so we kind of know where he is. The Scorpion G just killed this guy. I didn't spot the Scorpion G, which is really unfortunate. And this is where you'd expect the game to start turning around, because one of this, these IS-6s is probably going to die to the IS-3. All this IS-3 has to do is drive into them. So these guys are probably going to die. We're going to lose a bit more tanks in a sec, and pushing into them right now is not a smart idea. My position's really strong once they get lit, but for now, it's like I just have to continue to stay here and hold this. It controls so much, you know? So for me to give this up... It, it sucks because I can't do much right now, but it's, there's potential in a couple minutes. So what's going to happen here is if this scent moves up or as well as if this scorpion moves up, I will be able to support them. You can see I do have shots in this M12, so I'm going to try to make that one connect. And I'm also watching the map. I want to see what happens with that scorpion. Put a shot into the RD. The IS-6 gets the kill. This scent is starting to move up. I missed that, unfortunately, but I did get a shot into the RD. And if this guy continues, we're not going to get shots. The main thing is watching to see what the hell that scorpion G is doing as well as the SP-1C. So conceivably... Like, this looks like an easy win, but I don't think it is. I need to continue to hold this position. This is actually really weird. This is not normal, but basically this is what would happen is if, if your team pushed the one line. And this is why this type of position in the middle of the map is so strong. You could see I got shots on people in their base, and then I'm still able to put shots into people like the Scent, who isn't that great of a player and honestly just didn't really notice me as I farmed his side. So this is a really strong play. Next thing is to worry about the Pershing pushing into the WT, as well as the Scorpion G, who is full HP, and it's like we've got a bunch of one-shots. So if I threw this game, like, if I died, it's totally conceivable for us to lose. So... SP1C is in the open. This is misplay. Misplay, absolutely. I need to get out of there before the Scorpion shoots at me. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been worth it to get one shot into the SP1C, but it's like if I didn't have a shot and then immediately fell back, probably would have ended in my death. Now, the SU14 spotted. He dies, so I don't have to worry about him shooting at me. And I'm going to continue to hold this position, K7. Scorpion's in here, according to the teammate. Okay, that's good. The problem is I can't rush the Scorpion with the SP1C spotting for him, so I have to be really... <laughs> this is basically how you'd have to play in any sort of carry situation. It's so patient that it, um, you know, it's just not dying is keeping keeping us in the game right here. These guys are both one shots. I'm a one shot. The WT is basically a two shot. We've got a team full of one shots and they've got a lot of HP on them. So any mistake will lose us the game. If we push in not at the same time, it's like this is absolutely a loss. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to see if the Scorpion G is going to move, right? The Scorpion G is kind of pinned down right now. So what the fuck are they doing? I would expect them to push in like this. There's no threat to them right now, right? So I'd expect the teammates to push in. I'd also kind of expect the WT to like challenge the Pershing, but that's not happening. So I'm going to continue to watch like these types of roadways and see what happens. We have to wait for our teammates to push in. <laughs> Goddamn. All right, so a SP1C spotted. He kills the light tank on our team. I'm going to try to get the kill right here. The GW Panther actually gets the kill, which is really good. Now, because the SP1C was able to get so far up, 
I think there might be the Pershing there as well. We'll see what the WT is doing. This is like the type of position you want on a map like Glacier because it just gives you so much. So Pershing gets spotted. Of course, he's going to start to fall back because there's a WT pushing into him, but he might also have the Scorpion supporting him. So it's very conceivable that the WT dies here. And um, then we have to deal with the fact that they've still got that full HP Scorpion G and these guys are all one shot. So realistically, because these guys are in a platoon, the Scorpion's probably watching this road and the Pershing's watching the other side. Oh, that Pershing's got the WT. There's nothing I can do. But if I continue to hold this angle, I might get a shot into him. Perfect. And, like, that guy's now a one-shot for everyone on my team. So, put a shot into the Pershing. They now know that I'm still here, but I'm not going to make any other changes. I'm poking like this to see if I get lit. I want to see if the Scorpion's in a position to spot me. He obviously isn't. So, that's really good. And as these guys push in, they're going to spot the Scorpion. And it's like, if they die... Like, once we know where the Scorpion is, we can then make a play from there. The thing is, we're not in a position to try to scout the Scorpion or do anything like that because he's just fucking camping. Now, right now the I-6 is going to cap. I think that's absolutely the right play. What's going to happen is once they get on cap, the Pershing and the Scorpion G are going to be forced to deal with that, and that's when my position of holding, like, this rock is going to be so useful. This has got to be the most important spot on the map if you've won the northern side already. So, you know, we'll see. The 45 TP is pushing up. I want to be in a position to support him. Do I have shots? If he gets YOLO'd, I might have shots. We'll see. I think pushing into the Scorpion like this is not that great of a play. Can I get him to fall back? Like, they have to move. We're on cap, right? They've literally got a timer until they have to do something. So, um, pushing in like this, probably not that great. If anyone gets lit, I'll only have shots of them about here. Let's see. Really, I should just be standing still, unless I get shot at. So, okay, he's holding that angle. Good, I'm watching this, right? If anyone tries to go down like this, that's where my position's really strong because I'm making sure this guy doesn't get flanked, and they also won't get through into our base. Now, Scorpion G gets spotted. That's really useful for us. The main risk here is them getting two people on cap. So, I pwned into the Scorpion. I don't know why they're not resetting. Going for Artie isn't the worst play in the game, though, to be honest. So I can't really do much. I'm going to have to rely on this GW to spot the Scorpion. And then once the Scorpion gets lit, I'll take shots here we'll have to focus on the Pershing. So like I said, the big thing is them getting on cap. I'm just going to go for the biggest target here because I don't have the best accuracy in the game, but if we can get the kill, that would be solid. Okay, so the Pershing's now two, oh, one shot. He was a two shot. Okay, and me being there prevented them from double capping, which absolutely would have been their better play. The Pershing had HE loaded for Artie, and the Scor Scorpion's going to make the right play and try to push into me. Luckily, at this point in time, we've already... I'm so good. <laughs> oh no, okay. I'm just going to try to delay here, man, because as long as this game lasts, I'm doing well. So, Scorpion G's going to push into me. I've got 11 seconds left. I'm falling back to give me an angle on this guy. I push forward, it bounces. Now, that's just to get another shot off. I want to see if I can get one more. We're going to put the shot out, drive forwards. That bounces, unfortunately. And here I have to push forwards and hope the Pershing low rolls. And he's got HE loaded, so... <laughs> I mean, delaying absolutely was good enough, right? Like, if they had two on cap, we would have lost that game, so... Very happy with that play. Honestly, F6 when you're carrying is such a strong position, especially if you control the north because you don't have to worry about getting flanked. But uh, <laughs> that's pretty much what you want to do on Glacier, actually. That's why winning the north is so strong, right? So normally what I'll do on that map is I'll play the mid and then I'll go to the north, and that's exactly like why you want to do that. It's like if you can get into their base and control the mid, you're set. So... <laughs> You know, it was a slow game, but we still did 2,143 damage. The best player on our team did 2,200. He was the T71. But really, I think, like, if both of... If I wasn't in this game, we certainly would have lost. And, um, you know, same to the IS-6. Like, my team did a very good job in that case. So, I hope you enjoyed watching me teach you how to kick ass on Glacier.